Hi, I'm Benjamin Payne. At the K-12 Education Office at Hillsdale College, we support school founding groups and their efforts to start classical schools across the country. Finding the right leader is one of the first and most important steps to building a successful school. While we do consider experience in education, we seek candidates who exhibit unwavering personal integrity, honesty, courage, and servant-hearted leadership. Perhaps that's you. If you're looking to engage in fulfilling, impactful, and challenging work protecting our nation's future and building up the next generation of virtuous citizens, we'd love to hear from you. I'm looking for strong school leaders right now. Learn more about how you can make a difference at hillsdale.edu slash leader. hillsdale.edu slash L-E-A-D-E-R. That's hillsdale.edu slash leader. Welcome to the Hillsdale College K-12 Classical Education Podcast, bringing you insight into classical education and its unique emphasis on human virtue and moral character, responsible citizenship, content-rich curricula, and teacher-led classrooms. Now your host, Scott Bertram. Thanks for listening. The Hillsdale College K-12 Classical Education Podcast is part of the Hillsdale College Podcast Network. More episodes at podcast dot hillsdale dot edu or wherever you find your audio you also can find more information on topics and ideas discussed on this show at our website k12 dot hillsdale dot edu we're joined by jeffrey rogers he is associate dean of men here at hillsdale college and if you're around here everyone calls him chief thanks for joining us thank you appreciate it we're talking today about team building building men boys to men. What needs to be said about this topic? Why is this something worthy of some conversation? Yeah, um, unfortunately, we find ourselves in a position where being a man is under assault. And defining what actually is a boy is uh, seems to be hard for some people. And so I think that we need to encourage young men, uh, boys, to grow up to be men. And it's okay for boys to wrestle around and do boyish things, but we're after uh, giving them responsibility to become men. So what, when you look at boys, what what do they need from schools? What do they need from leaders, from adults in their lives to become the best man that they can be? Yeah, so one, we need to understand that they're not girls. (laughs) (laughs) They're not growing up to be women. Case in point, uh, uh, you have two boys that are wrestling in the classroom, and the teacher certainly needs to take control of the classroom. They shouldn't be wrestling, uh, but they shouldn't be demonized either. Uh, boys have energy. Uh, I put it this way a boy is not a problem in search of a medication. Hmm. And a, also, I would add, a boy is not a problem in search of a diagnosis. He's a boy. (laughs) Let him be a boy. (laughs) So you can grow up to be a man. I I think that's so important. Uh, You know, here on the campus, we have a lot of teachers here, and I've talked to a few of them and kind of put that scenario to them about boys uh, wrestling around. And they're like, yes, they, they, I don't, don't, why they can't just sit like the the little girls? Because they're not little girls. They're men. They're boys. (laughs) They love to be men. Scott, I would say that this is so important a statement I'm about to make. Um, unfortunately, we live in a world that's ever increasing, becoming more dangerous. We need to develop young boys to be heroes. We are going to need those little boys to grow up and run toward the gunfire, not away from it, not to cower in fear when evil lurks his head. Unfortunately, it will. And so we need to train our boys to be protectors, to be men. And that should be something they should... We should champion, they should look forward to wanting to become. Mm -hmm. And they see this modeled by other men. As you and I are fathers, our sons see it modeled by us. Kids are really good modelers of other others. And so we want to model manhood for them. And so in my interactions with young boys, I want to do I see young boys, I go up, I grip their hand, shake their hand. And if they don't look at me, I said, hey, look me in the eye. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, you got a wet noodle there. 
firm that hands shake up. What am I doing? I'm modeling what a man does. Yeah. He faces his responsibility. He takes accountability for the handshake. He doesn't look away. He's looking me in the eye. It's like I'm looking you in the eye. I, I see this too much where they're looking down. They're looking away. When trouble comes, they'll do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important. Simple lessons. Yes. Like the ones you mentioned, I talk to both my son and my daughter, but especially my son, mm -hmm. about meeting people. What do you yes. do when you meet someone? Look yes. them in the eye. Yes. Say, this is my name. It's good to meet you. Right? You don't want them, as you said, not making eye contact, looking away, just sort yes. of saying, hey. Those small lessons that can be taught and modeled, which ones would you perhaps highlight as being important for our young boys? Yes. These you and I learned when we were, I, I'm, I'm, I'm including you in this, I'm assuming you learned these two <laughs> from our parents. And one of, them, one of them is respect for adults. Meaning, I don't care if the adult is saying the wrong thing, you can still respect them. You know, I've, you know, you've heard the statement, you know, spit out the bones and chew on the meat, right? Mm -hmm. You could choke on a bone, mm -hmm. but you could, you could respect. So that is seen to have been lost. I actually saw a young man. He was, uh, <laughs> he was walking with a, an, uh, an older lady and he opened the door and just like, <laughs> she was right behind him. She, <laughs> she's trying to get in. And, and I, I did a course correction. I said, Hey, and he said, Oh, oh chief, I, this, this kid is a graduate. He said, oh, I've lost some of my Hillsdale touch. It's not a Hillsdale touch. It's what a man does. Like, you know, so the, that, that respect and responsibility, not only for elders, but also for treating women with respect. Now, there are a few women out here. So I can get the door myself. And that's great. But it's nice when a guy opens the door for a woman. And, and I, I certainly that's one. Uh, another one is, and this one is often forgotten, uh, but it's important. You don't have to speak ad nauseum about all the things you know. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, wisdom literature from the Old Testament says a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up strife. The more you start talking, the more people are going to get mad. So let your words be few. Don't sit there and give a, 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 a dissertation of all the things you know. Uh, I can go into the most difficult class that's teaching a uh, Euclidean, what you know, some really difficult class. <laughs> and I could sit in there and, and just stroke my beard and never say a word. And people are like, man, Chief is smart. Oh, he knows so much. And I haven't said a word. It's because people know. I mean, when I open my mouth, I could remove all doubt. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to say a lot. So, you know, pipe down. You don't have, you, you don't have to speak ad nauseum about what you know. And uh, I, I also would add, I mean, we said this, but there's a lot to be said about the handshake. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be said about, I, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I could tell a lot about a guy why he shakes my hand, <laughs> how he shakes my hand. <laughs> I wrestled in high school and in college. I wrestled in the Far East in Japan. And all my Japanese opponents that I wrestled against, I knew the battle was won and the handshake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I squeezed their hand as hard as I can and looked them right in the eye, and I felt the response from them mm -hmm. was a was a fear. Yeah. And what have I gotten into? And I wasn't that good of a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> but after the first period, if I didn't finish business, it was going to be on because the, the, my opponent would realize, hey, he's a, he's a man just like me, and yeah. I could actually win this. So. Talking with uh, Jeffrey Rogers, Chief, who is Associate Dean of Men here at Hillsdale College, about team building, building men, boys to men. Let's talk about the role uh, and responsibility of K-12 teachers in the development uh, of, of boys. What should they be aware of and what is their role? Yeah, so an uh, ever-increasing important role, unfortunately, a lot of parents are both are working and uh, that attention and that that modeling, they may not see as much necessarily in the home. Some homes, yes, but a lot not are the kid, the son or the, uh, is coming from a one parent home. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important for teachers to see that 
you know, God has designed boys different than girls. They're they're different, and that's okay. Uh, but with with boys, we we want to channel their energy, give them responsibility in the classroom, let them lead. It's okay, you know. At Hillsdale, you know, this is as they, you know, we we get young men here, and I actually want to see them fail. I want them to fail forward. Mm-hmm. I don't want to remove, uh, you know, that great uh, philosopher Mike Tyson said, uh, everybody has a plan so they get punched in the mouth. Mm-hmm. And so life is going to punch them in the mouth. So the teachers can can help them get punched in the mouth, not literally get punched in the mouth, but put them in situations where they could fail and see how, their reaction to failure and uh, knowing that they can, they can recover, they could come back from that, fire kids from being line leader and promote another kid. Kids need to understand sometimes you get fired. Sometimes you get demoted. How are you going to respond to the demotion? Are you going to curl up in a ball and put your uh, thumb in your in your mouth and start sucking on it and and whining? Or are you going to uh, respond and see the opportunity and the difficulties that life puts in your way instead of the difficulty and the opportunity? So I think teachers can uh, can structure their classes in such a way where they allow these young boys who will grow up to be men, like they will be men. The question is, what kind of men will they be? Will they be weak? Will they be men that kind of look back to their parents for everything? That's one of the things that we find in the, when they get to college is, you know, there's this term I learned in England. It's called a kipper. And that's a fish, right? Well, it's an acrostic. Kids and parents pocket erode in retirement savings. <laughs> Nobody wants a kipper. <laughs> Nobody wants their son living in a basement. And it starts, believe it or not, in the K through 12 space mm-hmm. where kids are given responsibility. I went through my entire K through 8 education mm-hmm. without a single male teacher in the classroom. Yeah. That was a little bit of time ago. I don't know how much things right. have changed, but I, I, you know, I imagine <laughs> it's still fairly female heavy in those yes. first K through 8 years. Those are formative years yes. for our, our young boys. What kind of advice would you give to female K-8 teachers in dealing with boys and helping them to become good men? Yeah. So bring, find some men, bring them in the classroom, give opportunity. You have a, bring a, bring a firefighter, Mm. police officer, let them see what they're going to become. Uh, Let them see those authorities uh, in their lives. Uh, I, my hat's off. I mean, like you, I, I think I went through first through 10th grade and they were, <laughs> except my wrestling coach was a guy Yeah, and they were all females uh, and they did great. They did a great job. They, they taught me the things I needed to know, but they're not guys. And so uh, a woman can't teach a man to be a man. A man needs to learn from other men. And so I think that's a good question you asked. Those teachers should bring in. Look, if you, you don't you don't have a wrestling program and the teacher's like, I'm not going to wrestle with them. Find a man that that can and give them those opportunities to do that. I just speak from a, a personal experience. But as I think back on those years now, the custodian was mm. a male mm. and he was like a superstar in the school for the boys. <laughs> like he was yeah. the one male you would interact with on a semi-daily basis Mm -hmm. in in that school. And so kids like to be around that sort of figure. Yes. Yes. I've often found as a a, a quick story, I was in uh, Kroger and I used to go there for manager specials. I see you there. I like the manager specials. I look for those like men hunt for deer (laughs) and uh, it's less dangerous and it's very rewarding as well. But while I was there, I saw a, a, a young boy giving his mom some, some trouble there. And so I, I just happened to walk by and I said, hey, you need to listen to your mother. And he just, ah! I start crying. <laughs> and his mom's like, what happened? Like, that man. And my wife says, hey, uh, you can't like do that. <laughs> she said, that's illegal. But I, I, I felt for the mom and the mom later said, hey, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and yeah, I just thought, you know, that, that boy, needs a man in his life. I don't know, maybe dad was working or whatnot. But yeah, I, I think we have a responsibility as men to model what a, being a man is in front of young boys so that they can see it. As these boys become a bit older, perhaps they attend here at Hillsdale. And you and I both know we have great kids, mm-hmm. great students here at Hillsdale. That doesn't mean there aren't 
issues, problems, mm -hmm. things that you need to be involved with? What, what, what strategies do you use when, again, knowing you're dealing with a great student, a great kid, mm -hmm. and having to have discussions or having to have discipline involved, perhaps in some cases, mm -hmm. how do you approach those situations? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I, don't, I certainly don't approach them like the Dean of Women. Mm -hmm. When we get all the freshman boys together, one of the first things we say, this is the most ugly, this is the ugliest group of boys I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> There's something about boys and men that we bond around insults, <laughs> insulting each other. I mean, it's just a, a kind of a guy thing, right? But one of the things is to build a relationship with them so they, they learn to trust you and then they'll come and they'll talk to you. Uh, meet them where they're at and take them along on their journey. I don't, they shouldn't be voluntold to do this. A lot of, a lot of what we do at Hillsdale is we volunteer kids to volunteer each other mm -hmm. to come along on this uh, difficult journey of academic excellence. And, and, and as you said, we got a really, a lot of great kids, but there's always room for improvement and we're always want to move toward excellence and, and, and helping kids make the march toward that way. And it's, and it's a great journey. You were talking a little earlier about boys learning about the need for heroes, mm. the boys learning about the need perhaps to be, to be leaders in their house, in their community, mm. as they grow old. What kind of responsibilities can perhaps K-8, K-12 teachers give to these boys to help them become better men in the future? Yeah. So one of the things is like uh, someone would say, well, you know, I don't have any men. Oh, there's a lot of books written about some great men and kids can fall. In, I see all these books you have here. <laughs> kids can <laughs> fall in love with uh, generals. Yeah. And there are some great generals. I I'm reading about Patton right now and you know, a lot of great things he did, some things not so great. But but certainly uh, uh, through the story of reading and, and, and sharing that with them, you can give them that. Uh, you could you could also give them uh, uh the love, love for the country mm -hmm. and uh, patriotism and what that means and what it means for a young man to be a patriotic young man. Faith is, faith is a bedrock and solid and important for young men. Now, some people are like, well, we don't, we don't talk about that. You can model it. Uh, you can live it out in front of them. And the kids are mirrors of modeling. They mm -hmm. see it. They model it. I mean, I remember my son's my son modeled everything I did, except he didn't go in the Navy. He went in the Army. <laughs> but I checked his uniform out, and he had 50 stars on it, and I was okay with it. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Jeffrey Rogers is Associate Dean of Men here at Hillsdale College. If you see him, you can call him Chief, too. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the Hillsdale College K-12 Classical Education Podcast. I'm Scott Bertram. We invite you to like us on Facebook. Search for Hillsdale College K-12 Classical Education. You also can follow us on Instagram at Hillsdale underscore K-12. Hillsdale underscore K-12 on Instagram. Thank you for listening to the Hillsdale College K-12 Classical Education Podcast, part of the Hillsdale College Podcast Network. More episodes at podcast.hillsdale.edu or wherever you find your audio.